People look at me and think I'm a different person. Maybe it's because I used to measure progress in kilometers, but today I do it in centimeters. Maybe it's because my view changed from mountains to hospitals. Maybe it's even because I used to trust myself, but today I have to trust others. What they don't understand is that I'm still the same person. It's just that my journey has changed. It's just that my dream has changed. In fact, thanks to my previous journeys, I can cope with the current one. <laughs> Gingy Sardin. Gingy Sardin the 29-year-old has ridden his trusty bike 64,000 kilometers across six continents. I do other things. I also work on books. I write books, I write books. And I've already started to go to the next year. I want to be in a small and low in the area of Himalaya. I reached the highest mountains and crossed the longest deserts. Seven years ago, I took my first step to accomplish my dream and to become the first and only Israeli to cycle around the world. And I did it 66,000 kilometers. 42 countries, six continents, five years, solo. I broke four tents. I got hit by a car twice, not the same car. <laughs> I was even got robbed at a gunpoint. I've swam with whales in Mexico. I barbecue up a marshmallow straight on an active volcano, and danced with the Maasai warriors in Kenya. I was on top of the world. After accomplishing my dream and completing my journey, I wanted to inspire others. I started uh, lecturing, hoping to inspire as many people as I can to go out there and accomplish their dream. I remember one specific lecture. It was a hot Israeli day when I was invited to tell my story in front of a school not far from Tel Aviv. As I stepped into the taxi, the driver started talking. What a surprise. He talked and he talked and he talked, and then he stopped and looked at me and said, why are you going to this school? You don't look like a student, and you certainly don't look like a teacher. I then started telling him my story of life and until he snoppy and said, yeah, 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 I know you. I saw you on the TV. And I think you are the person to explain me one thing. I said, I tried. I said, you cycle around the world, right? Yes around the entire world, yes? What does it mean you cycle around the world? Where does the world begin? <laughs> Tough question, isn't it? Where does the world begin? How do you answer such a tough question? According to Zen philosophy, only a person that reach the lowest place on a valley will appreciate the highest peak. It seems that for me, it worked the other way around. This is a photo before my life changed forever. Six months ago, it was taken moments before I fell, literally fell over 
500 meters of aching, bone-breaking, dreadful fall, or at least so I've been told since I can't remember any of it. I think my mind shut down because I couldn't deal with the pain. הגענו לפסגה של הסטוק אגרי, היה מדהים, וכשהתחלנו לרדת מהמדרון היה סלע, שכולנו הקפנו אותו מימין, רועי החליק למטה, היינו חסרי אונים, צעקנו שמישהו יעצור אותו. סדן חווה בחייו הרפתקאות רבות ומסוכנות שהמורכבת שבהן הייתה להקיף את העולם באופניים. אבל המזל נגמר לו בטיול האחרון, אתמול הוא נפצע קשה, לאחר שככל הנראה החליק במהלך טיפוס בהימלאיה. The reason I'm alive today, standing before you, holding this paper and telling you my story, it's because of chain of miracles. Unfortunately, no miracle happened to my short-term memory. That's why I'm holding these papers. I was saved by an amazing group of Indian and Israeli climbers. Some of them are sitting here today. Thank you. The first miracle is that I fact, the fact that I was saved. Just imagine, I fell 500 meters in the middle of the Himalayan mountain. What are the odds of someone not only being there, but also, but also catching me. The second miracle is that they had oxygen. Without it, I wouldn't make it, since there was a hole in my lung. I was hanging between life and death for four long hours, moaning and groaning from the abysmal pain. Just before the oxygen was about to run out, they heard the sound of the helicopter. Ten people had to leave me to the helicopter because it couldn't land on the snow and it was too high for him. I also waited more than 100 kilos then, so that's why ten people. The doctor said there is a possibility that I will not make it through the night. My parents said that it was the worst night of their life. My mom and dad are here today, so mom and dad, sorry about that. <clears throat> A week later, I was flown back to Israel. I fell into a coma for more than a month, unaware of my surroundings, unaware that my friends and family stood by my bedside every day. I don't even remember this moment, though every time I see it, I can't believe it happened. Genji, tell me, Shika. בוא, תתקרב. תתאמץ קצת. תסיים. When I woke up, it be clear, it be clear to everyone that I now face a new challenge. I have brain damage. A new journey is about to begin. 
Only this time I'm quit with even more tools and more people to help you to complete this journey. And I would like to share you these tools, which I like to call them the Dreamer Toolbox. It's four simple tools I use daily when I was climbing in the mountains, and I use them daily today when I'm dreaming of climbing stairs in a hospital. The first one, the mountain always look bigger from a distance. Our challenges in life will always look more frightening from a distance. Only when you bring your challenge so close that you can touch it, you can start to overcome it. <laughs> For a dreamer, it's important to turn your big dreams into small achievable goals one step at a time. Second, be grateful for challenges. It might sound weird. Many of us are so busy running away from them. I invite you to embrace them. I believe only challenge can bring change. It helps you develop your heart and mind so you can go out there and accomplish your dream. It's only thanks to my journey and challenges around the world, I can now face the challenges around the hospital. It taught me to look at the bigger picture, be patient while it's hard, and believe that change is possible. The third one, not every dream needs to be fulfilled. The journey is more important than the destination. If you don't fulfill one dream, that's okay. It will help you with your next one. In the Wizard of Oz, Dorothy's dream is to reach the wizard. Imagine her frustration if she hadn't learned with the friends about courage, brain, and heart. The yellow brick road is what's important, and not the destination. <clears throat> Fourth and last, push your ego aside. If, like me, you, knew, you need to learn how to walk again, it doesn't matter that you cycle around the world or climb the Himalayas. In the beginning of my journey towards recovery, I told my physical therapist his help wasn't needed. After all, I know how to walk. After a few times, I fell on my face and realized that I need help and, and that I must trust my physical therapist so he can really help me. When I will walk again, it's not only my success, but also his. <laughs> Trust other people along your journey. Learn to let them help you. Maybe you think you can do it all by yourself, and maybe you can. But success means much more when you share it with the people who help you. The most important thing you need to remember in your journey is this. Stay positive. Negativity will get you nowhere. Don't get frustrated when it doesn't come easy. It's so easy to get lost along the way of fulfilling your dream. In the hospital, I see many lost souls. In order not to get lost, Take your big dream and divide it into small pieces. Think big, but work small. What works for me now is literally thinking in centimeters and not in kilometers. When you think in centimeters, every single one counts. In your journey, every centimeter you achieve today helps you with the next centimeters you will need to do tomorrow. 
So, if we look back at the taxi driver and his question, where does the world begin? I finally have an answer. It's not where the world begins. It's when. The world doesn't begin at a certain place. It begins at a certain time. It's at any time you feel ready to take your first step towards accomplishing your dream. And you know what? This usually happens not when you are in the peak, but when you are in the bottom. I'm proud to say that in the last few days, I started taking my first step towards accomplishing my new dream. My dream today is much more modest is to do the small things, is to get up, walk a little better, improve my short-term memory, is to walk up towards my girlfriend and give her a big kiss, eye to eye this time. Today, thank you. Today, my journey has changed, but my heart is still the same. Recovery is my journey. I can see the mountains, and I know I can climb it. It's not easy. It's never easy, but I'm doing it one day at a time. This is where my world begins now. I look around this room and I see a group of special people. I would like to leave you with three important questions. What? What is your mountain? What is that one dream you always wanted to fulfill? When? When you take the first step to accomplish it? And whom? Whom you're going to share your journey with? So go out there, the world is waiting for you, and take the first step to accomplish your dream. After all, this is where the world begins. Thank you. Thank you. Uh -huh.